Hello, today we're going to look at a standard uh, for fifth grade that will hopefully help you uh, when you're home with your child working with some math uh, to understand what it is that we're doing in the class and how what we're doing is going to connect to some things later on down in fifth grade and into sixth grade. One of the things the state of Ohio wants us to do is be able to solve real world problems for multiplying decimals uh, using concrete models or drawings so that they could see the relationship of place value. Now when we were students, we learned pretty much how to use an algorithm for everything. Um, but what we're going to try to do is show you that connection of what we're going to try to teach kids in fifth grade so that when sixth grade comes, they understand why they're doing the algorithm that they're doing. So when we get started in third grade, we'd have problems like six times eight. And one of the things that we want kids to understand is that that multiplication sign has meaning, that it means groups of. And with that, these students are asked to create models, or what we call arrays, in order to represent this multiplication fact. So what we would think about is we would have six groups of eight, and we would use base 10 blocks, or we might use grid paper, just like I'm doing now, to create these rectangular arrays so that we can show these six groups of eight. and how we would use that to then solve this problem of six times eight, which is a problem that's often hard for students to know. Now, kids could go in the very beginning and start counting each one of these individual units, but they would realize after a while that's not really efficient. So they would think of ways to be able to group these groups of eight to make it a little bit easier. So what they might do is they might like to group three groups of those eights, an easier multiplication problem, to get 24, and then figure out from there that when I put those together, I get 48 square units. This is the beginning of uh, finding area. It is the beginning of understanding what multiplication truly is. Now, we also realize that it forms a shape, and in this situation, it forms a rectangle. Sometimes we have multiplication problems that will form squares. We call these square units. So one, two, three, four, five, and if I have a group of five, we know that these are special multiplication facts that we call square numbers. And this will play a little bit roll down in fourth grade and fifth grade as we go along. Now, when we're dealing with decimals, we're doing the same thing in fifth grade. We're not learning the algorithm right off the bat, but we're going to use models to help us solve it. And today we're going to solve a problem of two and two tenths times one and three tenths. And we're going to show them both ways to show you how they're connected. So we're going to start off using base 10 blocks. Now, base 10 blocks are great because we can use them for whole numbers as well as decimals. When we're dealing with numbers that are greater than 1, we use these as 100, 100 block. When we're dealing with numbers that are less than 1, we can create these as now being seen as one whole. So within that one whole, we have individual units. We have tenths which is one-tenth of the whole, and we also have hundredths, and that's one-hundredth of the entire whole. And we're going to create an array that uses these blocks to be able to help us solve the problem of two and two-tenths times one and three-tenths. So we've got the one hole, we've got the two holes, and then we've got the two-tenths, continuing to build this rectangular array in this situation. Now we have our length set up, but now we've also got to worry about our width. So if we know that two and two tenths is our length, we're going to know that one and three tenths is our width. So we have one hole going down already, so now we're going to add the three tenths. And we'll continue to add the three tenths to each of those holes in order to continue to build our rectangular array. Now, what we realize, though, is we don't have enough to be able to create a perfect rectangle. But we do know that we have parts of a whole that we can use. In this situation, we're going to use hundredths. So we've got three hundredths that we can add there, and another three hundredths that we can add there. And now we've formed our perfect rectangular array. Now, does it work? Well, let's think about this. Push this over to the side. We have 
in this situation two holes. So we're going to add those two holes up first. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tenths. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six hundredths. And we've learned expanded notation already in fifth grade in that first trimester. So when we add those up, we get two and 86 hundredths, which is what represents in this model. Now, if I want to do the algorithm, I'm going to see if that answer is exactly the same. So we're going to multiply two times three, multiply another two times three, which is six. We have to put our whole place value holder into the underneath the six because we are now multiplying in the one's place value. One times two is two, one times two is two. When I add them up, I get 286, but because I'm multiplying in the tenths twice, I have to move my decimal place over two places to get two and 86 hundredths. We want to make this visual link for students so they can see what's happening within our numbers. So we can see that we have the six hundredths, the eight tenths, and the two holes. And we'll do this to get that really concrete understanding of what's happening for a little while. Eventually, we're going to transition students over to the algorithm when it is appropriate for students, uh, that being our end goal. But what our goal is for right now is for them to be able to visually see it, and then once they've drawn, created the model, then draw the model out uh, on top of paper for us to be able to show it another way. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.